So a lot of people tell me that 3D printing is slower than injection molding. Um, and th I, that's just incorrect. So I don't mean to come off snide with that first remark, even though it's really easy to do it, but we do want to explain why that is not the case. Now, the reason most people consider injection molding to be faster than 3D printing is from a very obvious side-by-side -side comparison. You see a large injection molding machine like this cranking out multiple parts a second, and then you compare it to a 3D printer making one part every hour. Now, that is true, but you have to understand not the machine, but the system around the machine. So if you look at injection molding, yes, in that moment, injection molding machines can make many parts very quickly with cycle times of somewhere between 10 and 60 seconds, depending on what parts you're making. If you're making something bulky, injection molds actually have to turn around about every 30 seconds to allow something to cool down. But if they're making something thin and quick like a bottle cap, then it's really quick and they can knock out millions of those. Fortunately, we don't recommend that you mass produce bottle caps with 3D printing. But then, once those parts are made from the mold, they are then held in that factory until a full batch is done. That molding company cannot ship the parts until they have made 100,000 parts, which may take a week or two or three, and then they're boxed up, and generally, since most molding is done overseas, they're put on a boat, and the boat ships the parts across to the destination, which takes, again, a number of weeks. Also, by the way, adding cost to it. Then you can also add on to the fact that when those parts arrive at their destination, they're not immediately sold to customers. They are put on shelves or stored in warehouses for up to multiple years, even though those parts are not being used. So even though an injection molded part comes out in a second, an injection molding project is not completed for months because when you order the parts, you do not get them until several months later. Okay. Now let's compare that to 3D printing. 3D printing is slower per part. However, looking at the system, there is one large injection molding machine inside of a single contract manufacturer. They may have multiples working on multiple projects, but generally one large monolithic machine making thousands of parts. With 3D printing, you do not have that one large machine, you have many smaller machines. So for example, in our print farms, if you're making a small piece that would generally turn around in a mold in 10 to 20 seconds, if it was a small brick, uh, in the print farm, it would probably take about one to two hours to print it with an FDM machine. Okay, so we'll assume one hour. If you take that, how many machines would it take to produce a number of parts in an hour that is the same as the number of parts that the injection molding machine produces in an hour? So if it can make a part every 30 seconds, it is making 120 parts per hour. So a 3D printing farm, in order to match that capacity, would have to have 120 machines in order to match the production capacity of that molding machine. If an injection molding machine makes a part every 10 seconds, then it's making 360 parts in an hour. So you would need 360 3D printers to make the same number of parts. That is not unreasonable, and that is exactly what we do at Slant3D. But the difference is, the parts that come off of the 3D printers, since they're made in the States, or in our various factories that we're building in order to place them closer to the customers, they don't have to wait to go out the door. They can ship directly to the customer to start going into production. So rather than having an injection molding company that produces 10,000 parts and three months later, they're shipped across the ocean and delivered to you, and then you have your 10,000 parts for the year. Instead, the 3D printing farm would produce a thousand parts per month and delivered them to you each month of the year. The benefit of this is not just the fact that 3D printing saves you having to store those 10,000 parts from the molding, but it allows the 3D printers to work continuously so that throughout production, you're able to update the design and make modifications over time. So 3D printing doesn't need to match the same per part time in the machine as injection molding, even though it can because 360 machines can match a single injection molding machine for lower cost very often, especially here in Slant 3D where we manufacture our own machinery. But it gives you a supply chain advantage where rather than having to store a large number of parts for a long period of time as you sell them, you're instead able to order in smaller batches, making iterations as you go. 
So that is how 3D printing can be made faster or as fast as injection molding. Rather than having a single large machine working very quickly, you have hundreds of smaller machines working very slowly. Much like how a single transistor is totally useless, when you put a few thousands of them together, you can actually run a video game pretty darn quickly. And that's the philosophy that we work on at Slant3D in order to hit mass production volumes of 3D printed parts. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let us know about other topics inside of mass production 3D printing that you might want us to discuss. And comment down below if there's any sort of products or topics outside of that that you'd like us to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.